All right, welcome to providing access to on-premise resources for mobile devices using Microsoft Tunnel. I'm Aaron Hamilton. I'm a principal product manager and architect for the customer experience engineering team. From an agenda perspective, we're going to start at the top and drill down. We'll start with a conversation around zero trust and resource access. Then we're going to move into general tunnel overview and architecture, we'll learn about the components, how they're deployed, what connections look like, uh, and then after that, uh, we're going to actually, in rather rapid fashion, uh, go through tonal configuration, deployment, and do some demos on the end user experience. So at the end of this, uh, you'll understand what the solution looks like. You'll understand how to configure it in console, uh, and then you'll know uh, what your end users can expect from a deployment experience perspective and from connectivity. So we're going to start this conversation uh, around zero trust and why it's critical to resource access scenarios. Uh, over the last few years, our work reality has completely shifted. Uh, the pandemic for me and for most of the world was extremely disruptive to our work patterns and our access requirements. Uh, we went from working maybe in just one or two locations to suddenly having massive parts of the workforce uh, from home, uh, them on the road. Uh, but in general, uh, the mix of locations has changed uh, the way that we need to look at security. Our network boundary on-prem is no longer defined just by our firewalls. Uh, we need to provide secure access uh, basically from everywhere. Uh, the tools and devices we use has also changed significantly. Again, went from a lot of people uh, being on-prem and using only corporate devices uh, to being on the road uh, using their own devices for BYO. And those devices uh, all need to connect to both cloud resources and on-prem. Uh, so as these workforce uh, individuals move around, uh, the complexity of managing access gets significantly more difficult for the network teams. And then finally, the way that we work has also changed. You take all of those same factors that we talked about and you mix them together. Uh, now, I'm at home, Susan uh, is remote, uh, you've got people traveling internationally, and we all need to hop in and out of apps and services to have meetings. Uh, it's a lot to take in and we need to make sure that users can do that painlessly and they can do it securely. So zero trust, if you've not heard of it, uh, is the security model that Microsoft has embraced end-to-end uh, -end across its platforms and solutions. And it's built on three basic core principles. Uh, verify explicitly. Can we verify the user's credentials? Can we explicitly verify uh, that it's a known device? Uh, with those, we can raise the security level a little bit, add things like looking at the risk of the login, uh, ensuring that the device is compliant. Secondarily, we want to make sure that that user has the least privileges needed. So they have minimal permissions uh, when they're accessing something, no more than is needed. And then finally, assume breach. Uh, a lot of this for me is around compartmentalizing access. So I don't want to grant a connection and then give that user access to everything. I want to make sure that if you're just accessing uh, the HR web portal, uh, that I'll grant you access if you meet the conditions, but that doesn't give you access to other things. From a resource access perspective, that lets us focus first on the identities and endpoints. Like I said, strong authentication, low risk, high risk. We need to know who you are uh, and the profile of the, the login. The device, do we know the device is it enrolled? Is it compliant with our security policies? Does it have the tools that we want to see on it? And then once we've verified those things, if we decide to grant access again, we want to limit the access to what data you're going to get into, uh, the apps and services, uh, and what other parts of the infrastructure. The big thing here is, again, explicit verification, lease privilege, and assume breach will allow you in if you meet all these requirements, but we're only going to give you access to that one thing. That way, if there is uh, something wrong, uh, we've limited our exposure. And then all of this is underpinned uh, by ensuring that we've got visibility uh, to the connections through logs. Uh, we use analytics at scale to identify a signal from the noise, uh, risky sessions versus just all the sessions, and then automatically taking action. So if the user has a risky session, uh, we see you logging in from a location we don't really recognize or you're not typically accessing, we can block that. Or if your device becomes non-compliant because it's jailbroken or something else going on, then we can block it. Conditional access policies uh, are the mechanism that sits underneath uh, and is one of the, the major components for secure resource access. At its core, it's a policy engine that allows and enables uh, organizations to take signal. That could be identity, device, location, uh, the resource that's being accessed, and then create and enforce access policies. Uh, the easiest way to think about this is like a simple if-then 
type policy. If you want access to resource X, then you must meet one or more criteria. So for example, if I want access to HR data, uh, which could be highly sensitive, uh, I need you to be on a corporate PC I need to know that it's compliance. Uh, and then I may actually even require you to perform MFA for that connection. That rule set is important for integrating into resource access and tunnel supports that. And what that gives us the capability to do then is say if Susan or Bob is trying to connect to accounting or uh, HR, uh, that that VPN connection itself also supports those same controls. Do we know and trust the user? Do we know and trust the device? Uh, and if so, then we can provide granular access. And if again, we see something uh, that's risky, we can block it or escalate. Now that we've covered the fundamentals around zero trust and resource access, I wanna talk about Tunnel itself. What is Tunnel? Uh, simply put, it's a VPN solution. Uh, it supports modern authentication, conditional access, which we just talked about. Uh, from an install perspective, Tunnel runs in a container on a Linux server. That server could be physical or virtual. It can live in the cloud or it can uh, live on premise. It does not matter, we'll support either. And then from a client perspective, uh, it provides access and supports iOS and Android devices. From a deployment architecture perspective, there are four basic things that I would want you to really uh, take to heart and understand. Uh, first would be the tunnel site. So when we build this out, the site uh, ends up being the FQDN or IP address for a host or a load balancer, usually a load balancer. And that tunnel site configuration item is used for, by the client to connect to your infrastructure. The second part uh, is the load balancer itself. So most deployments, uh, the client will pick up the site, it'll connect to the load balancer, and then that load balancer will then distribute the load to one or more servers inside. The number of servers is completely dependent on the scale needs. So depending on the number of clients and the concurrent connections that you need to support, you would deploy one or more servers, uh, that's fully documented uh, in the deployment guide and in the docs. We give you the formulas to determine how many servers you need. Uh, and then the last part that you will need uh, is a TLS certificate. This is the one thing that seems to trip people up uh, more often than not. And in this case, the thing that you really need to understand is that the site name that you create is the same FQDN that needs to be in the SAN on the certificate. So if I set up my site and I configure it for tunnel.microsoft.com, then the SAN on my certificate needs to be tunnel.microsoft.com. That cert could be public or private. Uh, if you do decide to use your own internal private certificates, you'll need to distribute your trusted root cert to the same devices so that they trust uh, the cert that's being used to secure the tunnel services. And then um, from a global perspective, uh, if you wanted to deploy this at scale globally, uh, the recommended pattern would be to deploy a load balancer at the top uh, that is either using geo information or IP to then route to an underlying um, layer of load balancers. So we would have that top level geo load balancer then pointed at a, a similar deployment to what you see here on the screen. All of this again, mm -hmm. documented in the deployment guide and the link is at the bottom. Now, from a connection perspective, what happens once this is up and running and how does the client connect? The admin in the console is gonna deploy a VPN profile and the VPN client to the users. Once they've got that, the device will use the client and the site config to connect to the configure, uh, the endpoint that we've got in the configuration. From there, um, that load balancer will pass the client request through to the tunnel server. Uh, and then from there, the server is going to validate the user's identity and device information. So when we talked about um, zero trust and we talked about conditional access, step four here is where that's kicking in. So uh, Bob logs in, whatever auth requirements we have for Bob, strong auth, multi-factor, authenticator, that would kick in. And then we could also check his if his device is compliant. If the device is compliant, uh, at that point, access is gonna be granted and that server will then create a connection for that user to hit the internal resource. Uh, depending on how you deploy all this, and we'll get into that in the device config, this could be completely transparent to the user, it could launch on demand, or maybe something uh, if you want that they have to go in and launch manually. All right, now that we've got the architecture down, we're gonna dive a little bit further down the rabbit hole and walk into the actual deployment end to end. Um, these are going to be rather quick demos. All of the commands and scripts that I'm using are directly out of the documentation, so I'm not leaving you uh, missing anything. If you see something that's being run, just go look at the docs page and you'll see it called out in the notes uh, with the specific commands. No need to take notes, just read the docs.
All right, from a prereq perspective, uh, let's just hit on the top prereqs. Again, you can check all of these on the tunnel docs, uh, but we're going to need an account uh, with either Intune admin or tunnel specific uh, configuration permissions. We'll need an Intune subscription or trial license. So those licenses will need to be assigned to any user that's going to connect. Then you're going to need a Linux server that runs container. That could be Podman or Docker. Could, again, can be on-premise or in the cloud. It could be uh, physical or virtual. It doesn't matter. Well, we need the TLS certificate that we keep talking about. Again, make sure that your site name matches uh, the, the SAN. And then finally, from a client perspective, we're going to need uh, some Android and iOS uh, devices to deploy the client and configuration to. Once you have all those, we can jump in to start configuring things. So here is the mem console. Uh, and in the console to get started, I'm going to go into tenant administration. I'm going to go to tunnel gateway and going to go to server config. So the server config sets uh, the configuration for the individual servers. Uh, that includes things like the DHCP address pool, the DNS server, domain suffix, search order, uh, and the supported address range. So you are not required to make tunnel provide access to everything in your network. If you wanted to restrict that, you can do that. You can see here at the bottom for IP ranges to include or exclude. Totally up to you. In this case, I'm just going to add my default domain and my DNS server. I'm going to hit next next and create. Uh, and at that point, I've now created the server config. The next thing I'm going to create is the site. So this is that first endpoint that we keep talking about the client connecting to. So I'm going to give it a name uh, in my environment. And then once I've saved that, I'll be able to hop over uh, and give it the actual site name. So the site name is the most important part. Again, make sure that matches your SAN. After I've named that, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the server configuration, that's the item that we just built. And then I am going to set this to automatically update. And then I'm going to give it the hours that I want it to update. And if you want to manually manage your tunnel service and update it, you can do it. Uh, I prefer to just kind of leave this uh, in an automatic and set it for the service window. Then they'll automatically uh, update and reboot and I won't have to worry about what's going on uh, with my tunnel servers. Uh, now you can see these are all linked. Uh, go to servers. It will be empty if not actually deployed a server yet. Once we deploy it, we can come back here and we'll see the server. Next thing is starting to configure the VPN profiles. So we're going to start with iOS. We're going to build out an iOS uh, full device VPN config. So I'm going to go back into the console, iOS configuration profiles. I'm going to select templates. Then I'm going to scroll down uh, and select VPN profile. Again, go ahead and give it a name. And then once I have this named, I'm going to select the type. I'm going to select Microsoft Tunnel. And then I'm going to start configuring some additional items in here. So the first thing uh, is connection name. This is what the end user would see on their device. Then I'm going to select the site itself. Uh, that will pick up the config that we specified earlier. Then we would specify if it's full device or per app. I'm going to leave this as full device. If I wanted to support and use a proxy, I could do this here, but I'm not going to do that for this demo. So I'm going to hit next. And then I'm going to assign this to a group. Uh, in this case, I've created a VPN users group that I'm going to use for all of my targeting today. Select that, select next, and create. And now that is done. You can see it here. Uh, if I want to create a per app VPN, so instead of the entire device and all apps on there having access, I would just select that same radio button here for enable per app VPN. And then when I actually do uh, an app deployment now, so in this case, I'm going to create a per app VPN connection for Edge. I'm going to come into my app catalog. I'm going to select Edge. I'm going to modify the assignments. In this case, I'm going to create a required assignment for my VPN users. So I'm going to add group, select VPN, select. And now I click on the details, and you'll see the drop down allows me to select per app VPN that I created earlier. I'm going to go ahead and click uninstall and removal. That way, if the user uh, unenrolls the device, I'm going to go ahead and pull my apps uh, off of the device as well. And that's it. That's how I configure both uh, full device and per app VPN on iOS. Now we're going to do Android. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and configure an always on VPN for a work profile. So I'm going to jump down to Android. Again, config profiles, create. Now, from a platform perspective, I'm going to select Android Enterprise. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom under personally owned work profile and select VPN. I'm going to go ahead and name the profile again. 
And then once I've named this, uh, you're going to see a similar flow to iOS. I'm going to select Microsoft Tunnel. Uh, and then similar config, I'm going to provide it a name. Again, this is what the, the user would see for the VPN connection name. After I've given it a name, I'm going to select the site. That site, again, will give it the configuration and um, address pool uh, and which endpoint it's going to connect to. And then what's a little different here on Android is instead of assigning it to the app within the VPN profile, I'm going to click on Add. And then out of my app catalog, I'm going to select the apps that I want to enable for per app VPN. Uh, this is done based on bundle ID at that point and associated to the app that I pulled out of the catalog. No other app will be allowed to use this VPN connection. I'm going to set it for always on. I'm going to not assign a proxy. And then once again, I'm going to use my VPN user script. And that is now has me configured for both iOS and Android for VPN. The next thing I need to do is deploy the client. The client for Microsoft Tunnel is the Microsoft Defender uh, endpoint client. I'm going to deploy it to my users again. So I'm going to go to apps. I've already got these apps in my catalog. So I'm going to assign these again to the same group that I used. I generally recommend uh, using the same group assignment for all of these uh, little bits and pieces. I also recommend, if possible, if you have VVP and manage Google Play, uh, that you use that to install the apps. It's going to reduce the number of prompts uh, and variables in the install for the user and generally provide a better experience. If this is done right for either one of these, I can deploy it, uh, and the user doesn't need to confirm anything. They'll just end up with all the apps and config on their device, uh, and they'll just need to uh, understand what the experience is that we're delivering for them. So now I've completed this uh, for both iOS and Android. Next, uh, we're going to go ahead uh, now and pivot over to the Linux host itself. So to deploy Tunnel, uh, the Tunnel server needs access uh, to things. So this script I'll download uh, is on the, the doc site again. All it does is verify that I've got access to every endpoint that Tunnel needs access to. So I run this. Uh, I'm basically looking for anything that's not green. Red is bad. Green is good. Uh, I should get to the end of this, uh, and then you'll see uh, that I've got all the outbound access I need. Uh, please note, this does not check inbound access. This is only outbound access. So uh, if you start running through all this and you've got all green on these scripts uh, and something's not working, the inbound access is the next thing that you typically want to check. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, the same script, but now I'm going to provide the uh, account option to it. And this is going to verify that the account that I'm trying to use has the correct permissions. Again, it needs to either be an Intune admin or have the uh, Intune Microsoft Tunnel role permissions assigned to it. Uh, this is actually going to redirect me to the device login page. So you can see here uh, this URL and this code. I'm going to use those codes uh, to sign into a web page. So here I'm going into the page itself. I'm going to go ahead and enter the code that was provided in uh, the, the tunnel script or via the tunnel script. I'm going to select the account that I want to use and enter the credentials. In my case, uh, I've got uh, conditional access uh, turned on for this user. I'm going to go ahead and enter the code that was on the screen earlier. And then once I've supplied that code, it's going to ask me to verify that I'm trying to send into the tunnel gateway. And with that, I'm done. If I pop back over to the device, you should see again that you've scrolled down. And again, green is good. Success, it's verified that the account that I'm trying to use has the right level of uh, access. All right. So in this example, uh, you can see that I've got two sessions open. They're the same host. I just have one session open to run the installer uh, here on the left and another one on the right uh, where I'm going to copy some files halfway through. So I'm going to start off, there's a wget command in the docs that will download the installer. So I'm going to run that. It's going to download the installer. Then the next thing I'm going to do uh, is change the permissions on the installer to uh, give me the ability to execute it. Now you can see uh, that it's both there and I've got execute permissions. Next thing I'm going to do is run the installer. So I'm going to call the same script, run it, and a lot of things are going to scroll by. Again, generally, um, it's going to go pretty quickly. Green is good. The stop and this prompt here is asking me to copy my certificate to a directory. You can see those listed there uh, in the other window. I'm going to just copy it over. Then I'm going to switch back to this window and type in yes, and it's going to continue. Now that the cert is in the install directory, the installer is going to continue. It will ingest that cert, uh, and at 
one point coming up here soon. It's going to prompt me for the password uh, for the certificate. It's a PFX cert. I'm going to enter that password. And as long as I enter the password, it will be uh, consumed. Uh, and then it will do the same thing that we saw in the network test. It's now going to force me to do device-based auth in the browser. So I'm going to pop over to the browser. Same thing. I grab the code out of the console window that I'm in. I'll provide it. I'm not hit for second factor this time because I've already authenticated on the same device for the same user for the same service. Again, granular constrained access. Uh, and then it will continue on. Uh, now it's going to go ahead and finish the install and also register the server. Uh, it will then reboot the services just to make sure everything's got a clean start. And then at that point, I can jump back over to my browser and head into the console. And in the console now, um, where we had already built out the server and the site config, I can now go to the server tab. And what I will see is that the server that I have just finished doing the install on is now available uh, for end users. Cool. So we've got the client bits uh, and config deployed. We've got the server stood up and configured. Uh, to enable conditional access, I will grab one more script off the docs site. This is a PowerShell script that I'm going to run. This script is going to create a service principal registration in Azure AD called Microsoft Tunnel Gateway. I need that to be registered and created so that I can create a rule in CA and use that service principal for targeting. So I'm going to run uh, the script, provide the same credentials. And in this case, uh, it is the same user, but it actually ends up being a different service and endpoint. So you're going to see me be asked once again for multi-factor. And the code off of my phone. And again, green is good. So in this situation, you can see that it's telling me it's successfully provisioned the service principal name. Uh, and I can continue on to the next step. So now that we've created that service principal, I'm going to head back into the console go to the conditional access plates and go under devices, conditional access. Now we're going to create the policy that enforces uh, our access restrictions on our users. So I'm going to name it. I'm going to select all users because I want to protect tunnel for all of my users. Uh, and now under cloud apps, I'm going to hit select apps. I'm going to type in Microsoft tunnel and it will show uh, the service principle that was created. I'm going to select that. I'm going to continue on now to set uh, the conditions and grant control. So for me now uh, in this lab, I'm going to hit configure. I'm going to limit this policy to targeting just my iOS and Android devices because those are my supported platforms for now. And then I'm going to go down to grants. Uh, and under grant, I'm going to select uh, require a device to be marked as compliant. So now what I've done is created a rule that restricts access. Any user that tries to connect to tunnel on a mobile device uh, will be required to be on a mobile device to have access to this service. Uh, and that's it. Now to finish this out, let's talk about uh, the general end user experiences. Uh, this is my iPad. The same deployment uh, profiles as far as the apps, uh, VPN configs have been deployed to this. We're going to look at what the end user will see. So in this case, no VPN is active. I'm going to launch Safari. It's pointing at a test page in my lab. You can see I'm trying to refresh it, and I can't get to it. I'm going to go ahead and switch out of Safari. I'm going to launch the Defender mobile client. You can see that VPN is not running. I'm going to open the device-wide VPN, and I'm going to turn that on. And then I'm going to drop back out of uh, the VPN client. I'm going to go back to Safari, and now you can see that the test page loads. So real quick, very simple access. The user just had to launch it. So the experience for just a standard full device VPN. I'm going to go back into Defender now, and I'm going to close the VPN so it's turned off. You can see here it says it's not connected. Now I'm going to head back over and drop down to my desktop and launch Edge. So Edge is the app that we configured for the per app VPN profile. Even with the device uh, VPN turned off, all I've got to do is unlock the app. That was my MAM pin. Now if I click on uh, the URL, it's going to access it immediately. So the user doesn't have to do anything at this point for per app VPN. It will just launch on the fly. But you can see that this is a per app VPN because if I go back over now to Safari and I refresh the cache page, you can see that it's no longer able to access the content. User doesn't have to do anything. Right. Now let's compare that end user iOS experience uh, to Android. And to me, this is where work profile really shines. In this case, 
an Android device enrolled, I've got a work profile and a personal profile. I'm going to launch that same page in my personal profile, and you can see that Chrome has no access to it. I'm going to switch over to my work profile screen. You can see the badge taps. I'm going to launch Edge. And without having to do anything again, you can see that the same test page immediately loads. I haven't had to do anything. I can refresh it. Still in the work profile, if I go over and I try and open the same page uh, in Chrome, you can see it's blocked. So I've got division across the device between my work and my personal. And even within my work profile, I've actually further constrained access so that I only have uh, access in the apps the admin is approved. All right. Thanks uh, for putting up for the lightning fast uh, walkthrough. We went through uh, top to bottom architecture deployment, uh, config, and user experiences. Everything that you need to be successful here is included in the docs pages and in the install guide. If you've got any questions, consume those, reach out.